This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Uh, this is the second lecture on Chapter 3 of the free lecture notes, the paper F9. Um, and in this lecture, I want to explain what we mean by overcapitalization and overtrading. Now, they are two completely separate things. Um, overcapitalization is quite simply when the uh, level of working capital is too high. Which is really what I was talking about in the um, previous lectures. That um, if we're not managing our working capital uh, properly, you know, if inventories are higher than they need be, if receivables are higher than they need be, and so on, uh, then we're being inefficient and we're borrowing more long-term finance than we actually need to. We'd be better to reduce our working capital uh, and use the money to either repay some of the borrowings or to invest in new machines, etc., to expand the company. So, uh, I've already said enough about overcapitalization. What I need to say more about, though, is overtrading, which is somewhat different. And to explain what it is, there's a little illustration there, which I've copied down on the screen. And what you've got there, effectively, is step into financial position. I've changed the layout slightly to try and make the point that it's coming. But this company has non-current assets of 500, current assets of 350, so total assets are 850. They've got long-term capital of 700 and liabilities of 150, again 850. Uh, I've changed it slightly, which shouldn't be any problem, it really shouldn't. It's as I said at the beginning of the previous lecture, the total long-term capital of 700, 500 of it is invested in non-current assets, 200 of it is in working capital. And suppose, as things stand, for our sort of business, the level of working capital is reasonable. For our sort of business, inventory is reasonable at 100, receivables 200, and so on. All right, look at the bit at the bottom of the, the illustration. The company intends to double in size over the next year. So they intend to grow the company. And in order to do that, they're uh, going to raise 500 long-term capital and invest it all in non-current assets. It seems perfectly sensible. I mean, it's a baby illustration, appreciate. In the exam, you won't be illustrating. You could be asked to explain it. Um, uh, you know, buying another 500 non-current assets doesn't necessarily mean we're twice as big, but still. They're going to borrow another 500 long-term capital, and they're going to invest it in non-current assets. No problem. And so next year, the non-current assets will be a thousand. The long-term capital will be 1,200. Which leaves us, surely, if they borrow 1,200 in total, if a thousand of it is in non-current assets, it leaves 200 for the working capital. But the problem is this. If the company's doubled in size, hopefully we'll be selling twice as much. And if we're selling twice as much, receivables will be twice as high. Now, of course, I'm not saying we'll sell exactly twice as much and everything. It's an illustration. But surely, if we are twice as big, you will expect sales to be a lot higher. And automatically, therefore, your receivables will be higher. Now, similarly, your inventory. If we're selling twice as much, I'm not going to be surprised if inventory is twice as big. We're going to need more inventory. Our current liabilities. Well, if I'm twice as big, I'm going to be buying twice as much. And if I keep to the same payment period, they're going to be twice as big. 
but we've now got a problem. So far, current assets are 600. Payable is 300. That leaves a net 300, and yet there's only 200 available to finance our working capital. How's it going to work? What's going to happen, in fact, is there'll be no cash. And we're going to uh, be forced into a bank overdraft. Of 100. Now, I'm not saying uh, an overdraft is always automatically a bad thing. But here, it wasn't that we planned to have a bank overdraft. We've been forced into it. We borrowed 500, we invested all in non-current assets, and we haven't realised that if we're twice as big, we're going to need twice as much inventory, twice as much receivables, twice as much payables. But if there's only 200 available still to finance working capital, where's the other 100 going to come from? We're going to be forced into a bank overdraft. Now, say uh, an overdraft isn't uh, uh, automatically always a bad thing. But here we've been forced into it because of bad planning. And in fact, things often get worse. You see, if a company is expanding very rapidly, as this is, twice as big in a year, receivables. They forget there's going to be a lot more receivables. They forget to employ more staff to look after receivables. And the danger is that it becomes even more than 400 because they can't control it. And similarly, inventory, they just, if they don't employ more staff and realise um, that they're going to ha have much more business, more receivables, more inventory, the danger is it gets out of control and these figures get even higher, which would end up forcing us into an even bigger overdraft. And it's something that often happens. You know, it, they will become a lot more profitable, but it takes time to get all the money in. And in the short term, the danger is that they run into liquidity problems and suddenly realise they can't pay the bills and end up closing down. It happened to a company my sister worked for. It was um, quite a long time ago. But she was um, the assistant to the... Uh, managing director of one of the fastest growing companies in the UK at the time. They started off as a small company, but they, they started buying other companies and grew incredibly rapidly. He won awards as businessman of the year. But the trouble was they hadn't planned properly. And this sort of thing was happening. They expanded massively hadn't planned, hadn't taken on extra staff, hadn't realised that um, they would be forced into an overdraft. And then it came to a period in the UK where interest rates suddenly went up an enormous amount. They got huge overdrafts and the company ended up closing down, not because it wasn't profitable, but because they ran out of cash. And so that's what overtrading is. It's where a company grows rapidly they forget they'll need more working capital and they lose control of the working capital and then have, as I've been explaining I hope uh, liquidity problems. And what's a solution? The solution is very obvious. Apart from uh, controlling things better, if they uh, do intend to raise money and expand, they should have realised that not only do they need to raise 500 to buy the extra machines, but they should have realised they're going to need more working capital and they should have raised an extra 200 for working capital. They should have raised 700 and then things would have worked. 
You see, provided they kept control of the um, current assets and so on. Sorry, I'm not confusing you. I'll write in blue. Non-current assets go up to a thousand. Inventory, if they're controlling it right, would simply double to two hundred. Receivables, four hundred. Current liabilities, three hundred. But if they'd raised seven hundred extra long-term finance, they'd now have. 400 available for working capital. That's it. They could have doubled the cash. I hope we see what's happening. You know, because they need more day to day cash as well. They did have 50, and we said that was a reasonable amount. In the red figures with the over trading, they've no short term cash, they've got this overdraft. Had they raised more long term finance, the blue figures, then fine. They're twice as big. They've got twice the short-term cash, uh, you know, for the day-to-day -day running of the business. And as I've written, they shouldn't have had a problem borrowing. If the company was profitable, you know, they should have been able to raise the extra 700. They didn't because they haven't thought it through. They haven't planned properly. All right, that's it for chapter three, and an awful lot of talk, I know. Uh, the remaining chapters on working capital, though, we'll look one by one at inventory, receivables, uh, cash. And here, there are calculation exercises that you can be tested on, on each of them.